Sometimes annotating an individual image requires a lot of patience. Now, annotating a video can be even more challenging as it involves multiple frames and also moving objects. But video labeling, also known as a video annotation, is an essential step in computer vision projects as it allows training models to understand and interpret visual information more accurately. In this video, we are going to discuss the best practices and the things to pay attention to when it comes to video orientation for computer vision projects. I'm going to show you how we can auto label videos, do different kind of interpolation between frames of bounding boxes and also segmentation masks. So here's my guide on video annotation and some best practices. We will cover how we can actually like annotate videos. We're going to upload a new video here into V7. I'm going to show you the whole process. Then we can actually like label our individual frames from a video, both with bounding boxes, a segmentation mask, and all those different kind of things. And then we're going to interpolate between the frames, which is one of the main features about this uh, annotation tool with V7. We can also use their auto annotation tool. So we basically just choose the region. It will do auto annotation. Then we can have keyframes interpolate between those keyframes and we get some really nice uh, labels for our data set. So now we get started. I'll just go up, create a new data set. We can upload, um, we can upload a data set. So here I'm just going to have doc detection. We hit continue. We will create our data set. So here we can basically just drag and drop our video into v7 so i'll just do that we can now see that my video is uploaded we can choose some different settings for our video file which is also one of the cool features about v7 so we can choose the number of frames per second that we want to extract from our video so here we can see that we can have the slider we can extract like one frame every two seconds for a total of 10 images so we can see the number of images that we will get at the end for object detection they recommend like two frames per second to create like rarity and low repetition but if you're using some video tracking data sets or we want to do tracking of specific objects we might consider like choosing a, a higher number of frames per seconds in this example here i'm just going to take like around uh, five frames per second here. So this is kind of like in between. Then we're going to label the data. I'll show you how we can do it with the keyframes, how we can do it with the timeline and so on. Then we're just going to choose annotate as video and then we just hit upload. So for this video, we're just going to pick the basic workflow. You can also create your own workflow. I have a video about that here on the channel. So we can basically train a model on a smaller data set, use that model to then do auto annotation of our images. Then we can play around with a workflow. We can assign different labelers to our to our workflows. We can have review stages and all those different kind of things. So definitely check that out. But in this video, we're just going to go with the basic workflow. So now we basically just have our data set here. It's first of all, it's going to upload the video and then we can go in and do video annotation. So now our video is done processing. We can basically just open it up and start with the video annotation. So down at the bottom, we can see we have extracted 97 frames from our video. First of all, we will start with optic detection. So we'll basically just do bounding box to start with. And then after that, I'll show you how we can do like create some mask. So for instant segmentation and those things. First of all, we're just creating these bounding boxes. I'm going to add a new class. This is just called a dog. And then we can basically just go in, add a class, dog is added. And then we just choose that one. So now we have the first bounding box around, around a dog in the first frame. First of all, we can just go down here to the timeline. So this is basically just the timeline for all the frames that we have in our video. And then we can see all the frames. We can just scroll through all the frames uh, in our timeline. So this is basically the same as editing videos. So this is a really cool feature. So now we basically just have extended our bounding box to all 97 frames. And then we can go in, choose different key points. So right now I'm just going to scroll through a couple of frames. So here we see that the dog in the start acts like moves. We can just go up here and take the edit tool. Here I'm just going to move the bounding box. So down here to the left, we can see this marker, which basically just indicates that we have a key frame. And then we can just choose a number of different keyframes when we actually like do changes to our bounding boxes or to our annotations we will create a new a keyframe and then it will basically do interpolation between those keyframes so we don't have to like label all the images in our video and this is one of the benefits of acts like doing video annotation instead of image annotation so here we can basically just do interpolation so here we can see that it interpolates between the frames and then we can basically just go to a new frame create a new keyframe. We are just going to move the bounding box so we get the correct bounding boxes. And then you'll basically just skip a couple of frames, correct the bounding box, and then it will do interpolation between those keyframes. Here, I'm just going to move the bounding box. 
So here in this video, this is an example where the, where the size of the bounding box acts like changes when the dog is moving. So now I've just labeled a couple of keyframes, then we can actually see that it does some interpolation in between. Let's just go to the start here. We can see that we haven't labeled these frames, but we still get a bounding box. This is a really cool tool. We just skip all the frames. We can still see that we still get a really nice bounding box around the dock. We just keep moving frame by frame until we don't get any good detection anymore. And then we can correct the frame, create a new keyframe, and then it will do interpolation between those two again. So here we can see that something were off here. So we can basically just go in, correct for it. It will create a new keyframe. We can skip, uh, correct for it, skip, and then we'll basically just do the process, like the whole process over and over again. So it is actually like really easy to label um, images now, videos, and get some really nice annotations in only like a, a couple of minutes compared to if you had to do annotation on all these individual images. So now we're going to show you how we can do it with segmentation. So how we can actually like create polygon annotations around our dock. So here I'm just going to do it for the rest of the frames. We can go up here. We can use the auto annotate tool to start off with the detections. Um, and then after that, we can basically just use that the same tool for doing auto annotation. And you will just see in one second how fast it is to annotate these videos with the V7 video annotation tool. So here, first of all, we're just going to draw a bounding box around the region where we want to do auto annotation. Right now, we don't have any classes here for our segmentation. So here, we're just going to create a new class. We're going to call that doc and we use the polygon tool. So that already exists. So we're just going to have it with lowercase d. Here, we can choose the doc one. We just save it and now we're actually going to annotate it. So again, we just go up to our annotation tool, draw a bounding box around it, and then we will actually get a really nice segmentation mask around the dock. Then we can skip to the next frame with the dot on our keyboard. We can use the same uh, video annotation tool. So here I'm just going to hit dock, dot. We can extend the bounding boxes here, and then it will actually rerun the model. We, again, we get a really nice segmentation mask. We just go to the next video, or like to the next frame. We move the bounding box, and then we get these really nice segmentation mask around our object. We can basically do this for our whole video or we can move our frame down here at the bottom. So right now I'm just going to move it a bit more so we skip a couple of frames as we did with the bounding boxes. And now we still get a really nice segmentation mask. I'll just extend the bounding box here a bit. And now we can actually go back and see how it does the interpolation between those two keyframes that we have created now. So here we can see that we actually get some really nice segmentation masks in between these keyframes. Again, we can just go in, correct for it. It will rerun it after you have adjusted the bounding box. We get a really nice detection, do interpolation. We just skip frame to frame. So by using this video annotation tool, it only takes minutes to actually like label videos with these segmentation masks, where if you had to do with the polygon tool, you, you will have to like choose all the edges of your object yourself. It will take like hours to label just like seconds of video. So this is a really cool tool. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things and you can actually like speed up the process of labeling your data set uh, significantly. So if you just go down here at the timeline, just go through some of the annotations, we can see that we have these images uh, with some really nice bounding boxes around our objects. Also for the segmentation mask, as you can see here, we have a really nice segmentation mask around our objects. So this can be used for a lot of different kind of things. This is speeding up like the annotation process significantly. This is a really cool tool and it will definitely save you some time in the future when you're creating your own projects and so on. You can actually like label your data sets in just minutes instead of spending several hours just setting up a data set for specific objects. So the cool thing about this V7 video annotation tool is definitely the auto labeling with the boundary with the tool up here at the top. We just create a boundary box around the object that we want to auto annotate. And then we can have this video annotation tool with the keyframes, we interpolate between the keyframes, use the auto annotation tool and it will do everything for us. So if you guys are interested in trying out this video annotation tool from V7, I'll throw a link down in the description. You can check it out, go in, upload your own videos, annotate the images in your video. You can export and train your own model for your custom application